Gordon was feeling grumpy. This was making James cross. Why are you complaining all the time? Because I'm a big blue engine and I know everything. Did you know that Philip beat you in a race once? Oh, and I shall complain whenever I want. Like when you came in last at the great race? You're just a small red engine with ideas above your station. I can't see any, said Percy. Where are they? Any what? Ideas above the station. The sky is empty. So's your smoke box, Percy. <laughs> Woo! Burn! One day I'll show you what a big engine can really do. So what can a big engine really do? Well, he can break a safety valve outside of Henry's tunnel. He can refuse to climb his own hill until Edward comes by as his back engine. He can lose the line of Sodor in a muddy marsh. Then there was that time he crashed into Ben's logs. Did we mention that Philip beat him in a race once? Silence! I'll tell you what big engines can do. And that's not speak to silly little green engines. Like you! Or Philip. Say, didn't he beat you in a race once? Later on, Sir Topham Hatt was speaking with Gordon. Gordon, you must take the express to the new station. Can't Henry do it? He likes lounging around stations. You will do as you are told, by my order. So off Gordon went. Soon, Gordon arrived at the new station. Gordon was not impressed. What a boring view. Important engines like me should have a panoramic view. Perhaps in 4K, with a wraparound screen, Dolby surround sound. Gordon was happy when it was time to leave. But as Gordon chuffed on, he began to feel ill. Soon he puffed onto a siding. Oh, I don't feel so good, he said. Gordon's driver and fireman inspected him. There's something broken inside of you. We'll have to go to the steamworks. Gordon was still fuming when James came by to collect his coaches. What's the matter, Gordon? Get derailed by a giant snowball? Oh, James, I will need you to take my coaches as I go to the steamworks. I seem to be having some engine trouble. Is that why Philip beat you in a race? Oh, the indignity. Gordon was still boasting after he came out of the steamworks. I am the finest engine on Sodor. Perhaps anywhere. Well, that's just great. Want a race? Get it? Great race? There's no time, said Sir Topham Hatt. We must attend the grand opening of the new station. But as Gordon approached the station, he found that he couldn't stop. His driver reduced speed, but his brakes wouldn't work. Then there was trouble. Gordon, his tender, his coaches, and most of the station landed in Lake Sodor. Oh, the indignity. Sir Topham Hatt was not impressed. Looking for a better view, Gordon? When Gordon was repaired and back from the steamworks, off he went to the station again for its second grand opening. As Gordon approached the station, he realized his brakes still weren't working. Hmm, still having problems with your brakes, I see, Gordon. Sorry, sir. Gordon had just come out of the works again. Come along, said his driver. I am not going back to that station. We're all right, said his driver. Third time lucky, you know. Gordon pulled up to the station, where Salty was already waiting, but his brakes failed again. Oh, I do like to live beside the seaside. Well, Gordon, it appears you have a problem with the station. I shall have to send Spencer instead. Along came Spencer. Next, it was James's turn. I can't believe that big sausage Gordon fell into Lake Sodor. I'll rescue you, James. Thomas, you're my best friend. Oh, Henrietta. My railroad. Look at all this confusion and delay. Yes, but what of you?
Thomas and Percy enjoy working at the docks. They really like the sea air and the sound of the gulls. But one day, the friends were feeling hot and bothered. A crane was causing trouble. His name is Cranky, and this is his first day at the docks. You little bugs, he called from above. If you put these freight cars on the inside lines, then I wouldn't have so far to travel. Rubbish, said Thomas. No other crane has complained before. Well, I'm the only crane here. Later, the two engines met Gordon and James and told them about Cranky. Oh, cranes have a right to be cranky. They need a lot of attention. Like me, in fact. You should see the situation from Cranky's point of view. He's high up in the air with the rain, the wind, and the hot, hot sun. And then he looks down and sees you two little engines. No wonder he calls you bugs. <laughs> Percy didn't like being called a little bug. Thomas tooted his horn very loud, which startled the crane operator who lost control of his load. I'm covered in fish. Better a little bug than a stinky fish. When Cranky heard that the big engines agreed with him, he grew bossier still. Come on, come on, he shouted. Push those freight cars closer to me. But Percy was too upset to concentrate and pushed the freight cars too far. <laughs> Poor Percy. Then Cranky played a trick on Thomas. Push your freight cars onto the inside line. It's easier for me to load up. So Thomas did. But Cranky left the loads beside the freight car, not in the freight car. You must have known my arm couldn't reach you there, complained Cranky. This mix-up caused confusion and delay. <coughs> Sir Topham Hat was most upset. Thomas and Percy, this new crane has an important job to do. I have heard you have not been helping him today. You will go to your sheds and think about how you will act tomorrow. Percy didn't like hearing that. So Thomas tooted his horn loudly again and startled another crane operator who dropped his load. <laughs> Quick, Percy, let's get out of here. That night, a big storm raged across the island. Some of the engines were trapped at the docks. We'll be safe here, said Duck. Nothing bad ever happens at the docks. But he was wrong. They had no idea they were about to be put into grave danger. A ship was out of control and running aground. It was headed straight towards Cranky. Oh well, at least it's not carrying anything dangerous. I can't! Maybe you need a crane! I'm the only crane here! Well, I'm not gonna help him. When the storm was over, Sir Topham had arrived on the scene. Thomas and Percy will help you, he called to Cranky. And then you can help the other engines. Please hurry, called Cranky. And tell them I'm sorry I was rude to them. So it was you, murmured Sir Topham Hatt. Thomas and Percy soon came to the rescue. It wasn't too long before Cranky was upright again. Well, I wouldn't be standing if it wasn't for you two. I never thought I'd be helped by a couple of buh, buh. Cranky was about to say bugs, but he quickly corrected himself. Um, small engines. Thank you. I'll never be rude again. However, you two mites are in the way. So move over. 
Ha! said Percy. He's back to bugging us. Don't move, Percy. You're still attached to Cranky. But it was too late. Do you still think I'm a mite, Cranky? No. So Cranky was raised up again. I'll never call you bugs or mites again. Especially since you're dwarves. <laughs> still think we're dwarves, Cranky? Oh. Just then Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas the Tank Engine. Why does Cranky keep falling down? He keeps calling us names, Sir Topham Hat. Well, we know what to do about that. Well, that was unexpected. But won't we need a crane down by the dock, Sir Topham Hat? Yeah, Cranky was our only crane. Well, I should have stayed down by the wharf. We should be getting another crane any moment. Ah, here she is. Well, hello, love. My name's Carly. Did I arrive early? Yeah, by about 16 seasons. On the island of Sodor, high up in the mountains, was a mysterious boulder. It had stood alone for a long time. But one day, workmen arrived to build a quarry on the land below. Rusty, the little diesel, met Thomas and Percy. Where's all this rock coming from? Percy asked. The new quarry, replied Rusty. Do you mean the Blue Mountain Quarry? No. Oh, you mean Farquhar Quarry? No. The Sodor Slate Quarry? Uh-uh. The Maithwaite Quarry Mine? No. Do you mean the Sodor China Clay Pits? No. I mean the new quarry. How many quarries does one island need? This mountain rock is good for many things, although it's dangerous up there. Why? asked Thomas. Because of a big boulder. I think it's watching me. How could that be? Boulders don't have eyes. Well, Percy, there's something strange about this one. Just then, Edward arrived. He was bringing in a new piece of machinery for the quarry. What's that? asked Rusty. It's called Thumper. Apparently, it collects the rocks faster. Soon, Thumper was working hard. The men were pleased, but nobody bothered to check the boulder. When it started to rain, the workmen went away. Rusty gazed up and shivered. Above stood Boulder. Suddenly, a large slab of rock landed on the rails. Rusty was shocked. Driver was concerned. We best leave till the weather's better. I'm out of hot cocoa. The next day, as the sun shone, Thumper was working harder than ever. Suddenly, Rusty noticed something. Boulders moving. Cool. Then there was trouble. Whoa, that ain't good. Then the boulders started to move. Soon, the boulder was chasing Rusty. Help, help, Rusty cried. The boulder will never get me up here. Merrick, what are you doing? Bringing the boulder up here. But why? Chasing you engines away is the only way I'm gonna get sleep.
Hey, here comes Rusty. Hi, Thomas. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Well, that was unexpected. Meanwhile, Scarloe was pushing some trucks to the quarry. Where did that boulder come from? <laughs> boulder rounded a corner while Reneus came up a hill. Duke was puffing along, minding his own business. And off the boulder continued down the track. Peter Sam was waiting at the rock crusher. I thought I was supposed to be crushing the rocks. Not the other way around. Soon, Duncan. <whistles> Sir Handel? Why are you down there, Thomas? <whistles> Never mind. I know why. And Bertram, God in the boulder's path. Ouch, that smarts! <laughs> Meanwhile, Rusty found fearless Freddy. Be careful out there, Freddy! A giant boulder is destroying everything in its path! I'm not afraid! I'm fearless! Well, that was a bit scary. Wow, Rusty said to himself. Look at all that destruction that one boulder caused. When Sir Topham Hatt saw the damage, he decided to close the quarry. We should have left this side of the island alone. Because of the giant boulder, Sir Topham Hatt? No, because we keep running out of hot cocoa. It was winter time on the island of Sodor. Snow covered the fields and tracks. All the engines were working hard. Everyone except Percy, because Percy was lazy. No, I'm not. I'm just covered by snow. Come on, Percy. This is no time to have a rest. I'm stuck, moaned Percy, and my funnel is freezing up. Driver's gone to get help. Oh, let me see if I can help, puffed Thomas, and he tooted his whistle as loud as he could. Thomas, how could you? You're welcome, Percy. Later, Thomas had to help clear snow by a tunnel. But it was too deep, and soon he was stuck. He was very cross. Just then, Rusty came by. Driver told me this is as bad as the worst winter ever. Let me tell you about it, Thomas. Scarloe was working a line up in the mountains. When the snow came, it was difficult to work. One day, Scarloe set off with some empty freight cars. Meanwhile, there was trouble at the mine. The winch that hauls the cars up and down wasn't working properly. Finally, Scarloe had reached the ravine. High above him were the mine yards. That snow looks dangerous, said his driver. If we go through, it might set off an avalanche. Let's set off this blasting cap and see what happens. Well, it's safe now, said Driver. Let's have a cup of cocoa and move on. But high above them, all was not well. 
A long line of full cars was about to be winched down the slope. The winch grunted and groaned while the trucks tried to break away. Finally, they broke free. The trucks flew down the mountainside. They crashed the bumper. And they landed in the ravine below. Just then, Scarloe's driver heard something. Avalanche! When the avalanche stopped, there was no sign of Scarloe. He was buried under the giant snow heap. And then came the funny part. What's so funny about an avalanche? Asked Thomas. I got his branch line. <laughs> Just kidding. Nobody knew that the heat from Scarloe's boiler would make an igloo around him. It's a snowball. It's an ice house. It's a ghost train! Once the workmen cleared the snow around Scarloe, they found Scarloe's driver and fireman drinking hot cocoa inside like nothing had happened. It just goes to show you can't trust freight cars or snow. Just as the men finished removing the snow around Thomas, Gordon appeared. Back to work, you two! He said, and he tooted his horn loud. Then it happened. Oh no! Then there was trouble. Let's leave him in there. But who will help clear all the snow? Ah, Percy will do it. So cold. D -d 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 -d. It was a moonlit night, and Henry was working with Edward. Henry was getting his goods train ready. Whenever that owl hoots, a mist rolls in, murmured Edward. Well, every time that monkey laughs, I get hit with a banana replied Henry. Well, every time that shark sings, kids get up and dance. Baby shark doo 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 doo. There's a legend that when it's misty, there's a ghost about too. Take care on the old line, Henry. Silly monkey, said Henry. <coughs> Owls, ghosts, mists. Edward's gone soft in the boiler. Why can't he be afraid of something reasonable? Like rain. There's no mist. But Henry was wrong. What's th 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 that? Cried Henry. It's an amber light, murmured his driver. That means proceed with caution. Who's there? But no one answered. <coughs> oh, not him again. Henry crept slowly forward. He stopped by a tree. It had a sign nailed to it. Beware of the viaduct. The driver was surprised. No one warned us about that before. And look, the signal's red and the gates are closed. Then they saw a light move within the signal house. g g, -g ghosts exclaimed Henry. Edward was right. I think it's best we go back, said Henry's driver. So do I, agreed Henry. By morning, the mist had cleared. The viaduct had been repaired, but nobody knew who warned Henry. Later that night, Henry prepared his train. Then, an owl hooted. 
a monkey laughed, and a shark sang, Mommy shark, do 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 do. And then Gordon thundered by. The troublesome trucks thought that was very funny. Be quiet, snapped Henry. I'm not scared. But he was. Soon, the fog had come down. As they approached the same area, they saw the amber light again. Then, the gates mysteriously closed. And the signal went red. The trucks had seen everything. And they were spooked too. Faster, faster, there's a ghost, there's a ghost. Stop, stop, cried Henry. A mysterious figure watched Henry go by. Up ahead, the bridge was out. Then there was trouble. Daddy shark doo 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 doo. Just then, Henry's driver saw a strange sight coming towards them. It was the hand car. Well, that's strange, said Henry's driver. I've never seen a hand car without a driver. It's a good thing I don't believe in ghosts. Guys, click here to watch another video and click here to subscribe to our channel. Bye!